Hi guys, and uh, welcome back to my videos um, on how to improve the accuracy of standard factory rifles. Today what I'm going to be doing is bedding the Remington 700. Uh, what I have here is a 700 SPS varmint. It's chambered in 223 Remington. And what I've done is I've bought myself a new stock. This is the Boyd's Pepper Laminate stock, uh, specifically the Thumbhole Varmint. I did try and accurize the standard stock that comes from the factory. Um, obviously it looks a little different. I've uh, cried on this and uh, covered it in an epoxy coating, but this is the standard uh, stock that comes with the rifle. Um, now I have bedded it using an epoxy bedding compound and uh, fiberglass. And it does work up until a point, um, but it's not ideal because the, uh, the, the plastic that it's made of is, doesn't stick very well to epoxy. Um, it's, it is possible if you use lots of mechanical lock, um, but it's just not the ideal platform for accuracy. So I've got myself a nice heavy, stiff uh, varmint stock specifically for this rifle and I'm going to be trying to bed it um, using the stress-free method uh, which I use on all the rifles that I bed. And the main benefits of bedding is uh, it provides a sturdy platform for the action. Um, what you want to avoid is the action moving about in the stock between shot to shot. Um, every time that happens the barrel vib vibrations will change slightly. Um, so you want every time the bullet goes down the bore, you want that barrel singing the same song every time the bullet exits the muzzle. Um, it's a bit like uh, if you get a ruler and you put it on the end of a table and you tap the end of it and it makes that wanging noise, that vibrating noise, you pull it back forwards, left or right, that pitch changes. And it's the same with uh, the barrel locked in from the action. If that action moves around very, very slightly, it can be a minuscule amount between shot to shot from the recoil. Um, it can change the vibrations. So that's why um, bedding an action to, uh, to a stock, to a rigid stock, and free floating the barrel always, uh, well, almost always, usually uh, brings on uh, improved accuracy. So that's what we want to do today. Now, if I just lift that out there, move that out of the way. Of course, the rifle is unloaded. I've checked that already. Um, now, as it comes from the uh, from the factory, there is nothing inside the stock. It is all wood. There is nothing in there. There's no pillars. There's no bedding compounds. So it's just naked as you would. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a drill press. I'm going to be uh, boring the holes larger, and, and I'm going to be installing uh, pillars. Now these aren't pillars that I've uh, bought online or anything, I've actually made these, uh, or well, will be making them. Uh, have I got a pack that's open? Yes, I'll use this one. These are actually brass pipe nipples, uh, made by a company called Watts. I got this from a local hardware store, Rona, which is uh, in Canada, but most places probably sell it. And that's what it looks like. Just like that. You'll find it in a plumbing section. And it's the perfect size. The inside diameter is exactly the same as the standard factory inside diameter uh, that comes with your Remington 700 stock. Thickness is about uh, 2 to 3 mils, um, and it's made of brass, so it's tougher than that aluminium. Um, so it works really, really well. And I've, uh, I've done this to a Weatherby Vanguard with uh, some pretty good results. Um, now, the idea of, uh, of using these is really all about preventing the stock from being crushed. <clears throat> As you tighten up your action in your wooden stock, the tighter you get it, the more the stock starts to warp, and that can change vibrations again. Sometimes you can shoot a group, and it's a very, very small group, take the uh, stock off the action, put it back together again after cleaning it, and um, you know you might be shooting to a different point of impact. It might be a larger group, it might be a smaller group, but those vibrations have changed. You know, the idea of using a pillar is to prevent that, and it makes a consistent um, platform every single time because you can't really over tighten it, it doesn't crush. It would take a lot to crush it um, and that's and that's the major benefit of using these. Okay, um, So it it's doesn't really improve accuracy per se, it's, it's more to do with making a consistent platform and that's the key to accuracy is make everything consistent, everything should be the same from shot to shot whether it's the bedding platform, 
whether it's your, your cheek weld, whether it's your trigger pull, whether it's your, your hold on the rifle, every, if everything's the same every single time, um, it's, you're going to have much, much better accuracy. That's why hand loading is obviously uh, usually more accurate than factory loadings, consistency. Um, that's pretty much all there is to say about this. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just uh, start the process and I'll be videoing it and uh, we'll see how we go. Alright, thanks for watching.
All right. So this is the uh, final part of the video. Um, I've uh, gone through all the cleanup and uh, trimmed all the excess uh, epoxy compounds, so uh, it should uh, should be good to go. So I've gone ahead and uh, mounted a Bushnell Elite 3200 scope on there. Um, as per usual, I've bedded the uh, bedded the rings on there, so it's a stress-free fit. I've also leveled the crosshairs off the uh, the base of the recoil lug. Um, but if you want to see how all that's done, uh, you can check uh, some of my previous videos. Um, so all that remains now is to have a look and uh, see what it looks like. Let's uh, lift it out of the action. And very slowly. There we go. Let's just put that to one side. Alright, so. Here we have the bedding job. Alright, so it's uh, looking pretty good. There's no air bubbles or any gaps or anything like that, so we're pretty happy with that. Um, pillars are contacting, as you would expect, fore and aft in front. Obviously, it's a round, uh, a round receiver for the action, and uh, the pillars are flat top, so you're only going to get contact uh, in front and behind. You can get contoured pillars. Um, you'd have to buy those. It would be very difficult to make. Um, but there aren't, <clears throat> you know, you're not going to really notice any real world differences by using a flat top pillar, which most people do anyway. Um, you know, if the contour isn't exactly right to your action, it's either going to be touching fore and aft like that, if it's, uh, if it's you know, too open, um, or if it's, it's too small for the action, and you're going to get it pinching on the side. So it's, you know, it'd be very difficult to get an exact fit anyway, machining tolerances and all that. Um, so 100% contact, which is uh, which is what we're looking for. Um, would I change anything about what I've done? I'd probably say I don't think I would add the carbon powder again. I did it not only to add a little thickness, but to uh, darken the uh, darken the compound. Um, but it hasn't really done that. I wanted it to match the uh, the color of the the action black, obviously. And uh, with clear epoxy, it goes jet black, no problem. But with uh, but with JB Weld, I guess, it's a different compound, different thickness. And uh, it kind of darkened it a little bit, but not very much. But, but at least it kind of matches the stock color anyway. Um, another way to check, uh, or a way to check to see if your action is, uh, is in fact stress-free, is to, uh, to put the action into the stock once the bedding job is done. Push it home, and if you hold the tip of the forehand, end and the barrel with your hand and grip it very very lightly you're not wanting to uh, to squeeze it or anything like that um, and then tighten up the action uh, with the screws with the floor plate in place obviously and if you feel any movement between the uh, the barrel and the forend you know that there's some kind of stress uh, still left over so you might need to do the bedding job again if you want to if you want it done perfectly but if as you're tightening up the screws there's no movement detected um, then you're good to go and some people even go as far as to uh, actually put a little measuring device at the end of the barrel and the fore end and uh, tighten up the action screws and see if there's any play. Um, you know, it'd probably be a few thousandths of an inch if that. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm happy uh, without doing that. Um, and that's that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I have bedded the uh, the um, the floor plate into the stock. It's clear epoxy, so you can't really see that. So if the uh, if the you know the, the underside of the floor plate doesn't exactly uh, line up to the top of the pillars, and the floor plate isn't being crushed, if there's any gaps, it's filled in by, with epoxy, and uh, just makes the whole you know the the whole assembly a lot stronger. So everything's bedded. You can see it's something I like doing. Floor plate bedded, action bedded, and uh, rings bedded, and uh, you know that's pretty much it. All right, the trigger's adjusted. So I'm hoping for good things from this rifle. Um, previously, it averaged out uh, less than half an inch uh, shot groups at 100 yards, um, usually shooting in the point fours or just over with uh, factory Hornady Vmax ammunition. So um, I'm, you know, it was in a standard Remington stock. It was bedded, but it didn't have pillars. Um, if I can at least match that accuracy, I know that I've got a little bit more consistency with the, uh, the pillars in place and everything bedded properly. Um, so if I need to take it out of the stock to clean uh, or anything like that, or you know, shooting in cold or hot temperatures, there's not going to be that stock swell that's uh, going to change accuracy. So it's all about consistency and keeping it all the same, so it's, you know, it's predictable accuracy. 
Um, so I'll probably do a few range sessions, uh, perhaps video it and see the results. I'm also going to get into uh, hand loading for this rifle, a hand load for the 243. And uh, we've got a load of ammunition for uh, the 223 that I haven't actually used, so I haven't really uh, got my 223 dies yet, so I'll probably end up doing that, reloading, and see um, see what this factory barrel can actually shoot, because I'm uh, you know, pretty impressed, factory ammo, standard barrel, factory stock, and shooting under half an inch. You know, if I can get um, five shot groups out of this, around half an inch, I'd be extremely happy, so we'll have to see how that goes. Alright, so that's pretty much it guys. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed watching the video. hope you stayed with you, with me for the whole thing. kind of gets a little boring at some places, but you know, it's good to cover all the bases. So uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.